listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. Whether it's for food, fuel, drinks, or snacks, about half of the U.S. population shops at a convenience store every day. We'll talk about what we see at stores and what the future may hold for our industry. In the last half decade, sales of healthy and fresh products have continuously grown in convenience stores. Customers have grown to expect fresh fruit, frequently choosing lower calorie options on their visits, and more retailers have increased their offer of fresh prepared food service items. Packaged, fresh, grab-and-go sandwiches, frozen prepared items, and handhelds are more the norm than the outliers they were a decade ago. Today, we're going to talk about trends in customer buying habits for fresh food service, and also what the last 15 months have taught us that can become an opportunity for growth for retailers. Welcome to Convenience Matters. I'm Carolyn Schneer with Nax. And I'm Jeff Leonard with Nax. And today we are talking about two of the bigger words you see here in our industry, fresh and food service. And today we're joined by Jack Muscalic, who is the Corporate Director of Fresh and Food Service for Cormark. And Cormark, for those who, who, who may not know, is a wholesaler who provides products to convenience stores and food service establishments. And also, a couple of years ago, was joined Nax as uh, one of the commitments to Partnership for Healthier America. So uh, both Nax and Cormark have demonstrated commitment to fresh and to healthy and all those things that, that we're seeing more um, in, in, with our customers. So welcome, Jack. Thanks, guys. It's great to be here. So let's start out. You know, we, we know that the pandemic has been rough on business, um, whether you're a restaurant or whether you're a convenience store when, with issues related to fresh and food service and some of the things initially what you could sell and what you couldn't sell. Um, but it's also really changed. Um, the, the pandemic has changed what people are looking for as we emerge fully from the pandemic with people out and about more. Um, but we have seen some trends change over the last year and a half. And we know that smart businesses have gone about and, and reinvented the future as we navigate this, this pandemic. So what are some of the things that, that Cormark's looking at um, to guide the future now that feel, things feel a lot more normal um, related to equipment, promotion, processes, and, and things like that related to fresh and food service? Sure. Um, during the height of COVID, I would say food service definitely experienced somewhat of a disruption. Um, and so we saw reactions from both the retailer, honestly, from um, the health department, and then obviously from a supplier standpoint, how do you react to something like this? How do you make a consumer feel more comfortable? How do you prevent that decline in sales? And so um, we saw all kinds of innovation stuff that we thought we would never see. There's touchless dispensers for condiments now um, that Kraft came out with. They're really cool. They started out in Europe. Now they're over here in the States. Um, There's individually wrapped products on Roller Grill I've never seen before. So that led to like confidence from a retailer's perspective, health department, that kind of thing. There's reactive marketing display techniques. So for example, we created a conversion kit for Roller Grill's so that the operator could actually have a food service offering at the height of the pandemic, as long as it was full service. Uh, there is pack- We have packaging suggestions, signage on cleanliness or food stations. So we had all these different signs made up, whether it was floor graphics for signage that was on top of the actual counter so that a consumer could see that a retailer or operator was actually cleaning their food service equipment properly and consistently and that kind of thing, making them feel a little bit more com- comfortable disposable single-use gloves, disposable tongs, that kind of thing. All these things came to a height during COVID, and I'm not necessarily sure that they're going to go away anytime soon. Um, but it's uh, it was really cool to see the suppliers innovate as fast as they did. That uh, usually takes six months to a year to come out with a new product, and they were quite fast to come up with solutions for retailers. So we were pretty fortunate to have such a strong partner base. Yeah, I noticed that uh, went to a couple baseball games now that they have uh, <laughs> unlimited capacity. And um, so things are a little different. First off, you when you order, um, you use the app. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, there's less of a cash transaction. But also you were talking about the touchless uh, mustard and mayonnaise and all <gasps> that. And people were just standing around. It's like, oh, that's cool. So, <laughs> you know, the innovation and surprising people, I think, is a big deal when mm-hmm. you hear the phrase like hygiene theater 
and uh, it used to be food okay. service theater and just like you want to have food on display. And now it's you want to have food on display, but also how do they, um, how are you ensuring that the food feels safe uh, to people as, yeah. as they, they look at safety as, as a big part. And um, you know, we have seen when we look at the next CSX numbers, um, we already mm-hmm. have April in the books and it is enormous increase from April last year, which stands to reason because April last year was not a good time. But we are seeing massive increases in our industry year to year in terms of food service, something that we expect to continue. Uh, We also recently surveyed both retailers and suppliers looking at some of the supply chain issues as we get through these bumps. Um, And and I would say about a third to close to half say, yeah, there's, there's different things that have been bumps along the way. But the one thing that came out is more so than ever, we are seeing that retailers are saying suppliers are partners with us and we are finding solutions together. And suppliers are saying the same thing. We are working uh, more closely with retailers than we ever have. And um, you know, in some cases, we, you know, this is about all channels and how Cormark works with all of them. But you know, the convenience stores are really stepping up and working and making sure that it's a two-way conversation. Um, that that we're looking out to each other. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I assume that you're seeing that with with your customers in terms of, hey, you know, we're in this together. We ultimately serve the customer and this is how we're doing it together. Yeah, we, um, I would definitely say that fill rate was definitely disrupted during the height of COVID. Um, and you're absolutely right in how strong our partnerships were with our suppliers during this time. Communication was extremely transparent. Um, it just became around solving for issues for the retailer so that they were less impacted than they had to be. Um, we tried to be much more proactive versus reactive. We continue to have conversations with our suppliers, with our retailers. Um, we try to be more um as far as gearing up for summer and things like that, as far as uh, projections, building inventories, having those conversations with retailers up front so that we're both set up for success for what they think is going to be a record-breaking summer. So I would say that while COVID was definitely bumpy and painful, you're absolutely right in saying that it strengthened all partnerships, whether it was with our retailers because we were in it together or our supplier partners because we were facing the same challenges. And Um, What was kind of neat, too, is there was consistent messaging. So a supplier was just as transparent with Cormark as they were the retailer. And so then it just became as as a team, like, how do we how do we address these issues together? How do we come up with solutions and, you know, be better for it for sure? So, yeah, it's very fortunate. Yeah. And one more thing in our survey, uh, we asked, uh, what is the second half of the year promotion that is most going to impact your business? And um Christmas was number two, the Christmas holidays, that holiday season. Number one was 4th of July, which is just upon us. Uh So that tells me, tells us that the work that you've done behind the scenes, suppliers working with retailers is really playing out because retailers are saying, I'm confident about Uh 4th of July as a big opportunity to, to really, you know, show that we're back. Yeah. I think, I think um, if, just like Cormark, you know, COVID gave us a little bit of time to kind of step back in food service and, and fresh in general. And it's like, you know, let's look at our menu offering. Are we, are we offering our customers what they're looking for? And then once the pandemic's over, because we all knew it was going to end eventually, how do you get that consumer back in your store? And so I think this summer we're going to see all kinds of innovation at retail. Um, I, we did at Cormark, we were able to take a step back and evaluate what we offer our retailers. And then so the retailers were able to to do the same. And so I do think everybody's planning for an awesome summer and it's because they had time to reflect and make menu adaptations and innovate and, you know, create excitement in the store, try to attract and keep that new consumer that we all grabbed during the height of COVID. Um, so yeah, I, uh, 4th of July, like I said, I think that they're, they're predicting that it's going to be a record breaking summer. So we're really excited about that for sure. So Jack, um, one of the things that I know like back in the early days of COVID, and I probably like most shoppers, um, we kind of turned inwards a little bit. We we started cooking at home more, um, reduced the number of grocery store trips. Like so for my family, we would go, I would go once every two weeks and but there were stop off 
um, in between the, the top off shop, uh, top off trips, if you will, where I'd stop at a convenience store or um, some other quick in and out to grab something because maybe I had a really cool new menu item that I wanted to make at home or try something else or maybe make more sour bread dough bread, right? <laughs> um, but I didn't do that. For the record, I never made sour dough bread, but I made a lot of muffins, as listeners have heard more than once on here. But there were some, certain things that um, you know people were cooking more at home, um, and I have a feeling um, that people were going more to convenience stores and buying bulk items or not even bulk items, but things that they could take home and prepare or, um, or even put in the freezer or the refrigerator for a couple more days down the road so that they didn't, they could minimize those Uh trips. Um, and that might be something that stays and sticks beyond now. Maybe we all became smarter shoppers, who knows? But, um, in that, have you seen, did you see anything back in the earlier days or even now in the mid days of COVID and were you able to pivot what you were um, offering to convenience stores in terms of items to to fit what retail or um, consumers were looking for. Yeah, so uh, we call it like uh, we reference it as like future consumption, kind of like it's not just a single serve handheld um, type of product. Um, but the bulk of my experience is actually supermarket, and all data showed that we were constantly losing the fill in shopper, if you will, to the convenience channel and the dollar trade. And um, so when I came to Cormark, it's like, we need a dairy set and we need a frozen grocery set because that shopper will buy it if we have it. And so we created those sets and then COVID hit and those categories spiraled. They were crazy. We had triple digit growth in certain areas, uh, fill rate, still experiencing a bit of fill rate disruption in frozen grocery. Um, but yeah, th- those categories, they were all up double digits, at least in the refrigerated section. So I'm also over dairy and uh, we call it deli wall or meat wall in another life. Um, but yeah, those those items continue to grow for us um, so much so that we actually have programs around them now just so that a retailer is more relevant and um, they're considered proven basket builders. And uh, during the height of COVID, we have effectively attracted that new shopper. The fill-in shopper now is more of a habitual shopper. Um, they've identified convenience as definitely a secondary avenue for those types of products. And I am a firm believer if we continue to keep those products in the stores, that shopper will keep coming into the store and building the basket for the retailer. So, yeah. No, oh, definitely. I think there's a lot of um, COVID in all of its negative forms <laughs> certainly built a lot of loyalty or allowed retailers to become trusted partners, yeah. like we said before, just like you're partnering, helping the the retailers succeed the retailers or the customers look to the retailers and then up the chain um, and I think also they've they've become very wise they being consumers um, about what the supply chain is and I think you know we're still like you said still hearing it on the news you know whether there's not necessarily sometimes a shortage of this but then you know an abundance of this I've, I've certainly <laughs> you can find hand sanitizer just about anywhere you go these days oh yes <laughs> but you know there's but there's certain other things um, that you can't always find but but that said, I think um, it sounds like you had some innovations that really um, could keep in um, a multiple day setting, which is which is good, like the fresh items that are that are packaged. So like a sandwich, for instance, that, you know, in the past might have been unwrapped and ready to go, could have been, you know, kept for a day or two, both for the retailer side. And, you know, you get the safety aspect of it, too, because you don't know who touched that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we um, I would say refrigerated snacking, um, our new commissary program, everything we launched at the most perfect time. So perceived safety of uh, fresh products. It was pretty much one of the only food offerings that a retailer could have, whether it was frozen, frozen or um refrigerated. If it was packaged, it was completely acceptable to offer that food offering. So a lot of retailers depended heavily within those categories to grow their food sales while food service was either shut down by the state or the city in which they operated it in, um, or just COVID in general, there was concerns with food safety. So packaged products from a fresh perspective as well as frozen uh, were an awesome opportunity to at least convert those sales to a food purchase. Absolutely. I want to go back to something that you both touched upon earlier, the the grocery and the fill-in items, <laughs> and then touch upon a, another trend. But in terms of the grocery and fill-in, I, I think it presents more opportunities for convenience stores mm-hmm. because uh, generally convenience stores, 83% of the items they sell are for immediate consumption, which means within the hour. Last year, that dropped to 80%. Mm-hmm. And that that is a result of two things. There were fewer people commuting, so there were fewer people you know, going in and about and grabbing things. But we also saw more people grabbing um, to-go items for the pantry, whether it's to heat and eat at home or whether it's to put in the pantry for a day or so. So now immediate consumption is down 80%. It'll probably bounce back. 
But I think that that leads to an opportunity. And, and also the other big opportunity is the return to healthy. Uh, over the last year uh, plus, um, you know, we've seen, we've talked to analysts and, and there's been some weight gain in this country. Um, it's been roughly 10 to 15 pounds per person on average um, throughout the country as people just are, are closer to food if they're working at home. Uh, I heard somebody you know, joking the other day saying it's, you know, a couple more pounds and everybody's heard about the freshman 15. This is going to be the COVID-19 pounds. <laughs> and um, the, that that's kind of the joke to the serious issue that health is emerging as as important if not more important <clears throat> and health comes in all kinds of different forms it can be fresh it can also be packaged but i think the next six months and next year there's going to be a huge refocus on healthy and how do you shed some of those pounds you inadvertently gained over the last few months sure. and um are you looking at things there to to either subtly or directly address that? Yeah, um, absolutely. So it's, uh, in the fresh category in particular, um, there's definitely been a shift toward healthier products. Uh, more and more people are label readers. It's the, it's the new consumer. I think they, their reference is the contemporary fresh consumer. Um, but they're, they're willing to purchase products, um, more regularly, I think there was a statistic, 68% of Americans will go into their local convenience store more often if they have a fresh variety of what they perceive as premium healthy products, whether that's salads, sandwiches, wraps, snacking, um, just anything that they feel is though it's, it's not a fried product. It's not, you know, it's a, it's a better for you option. It's a meal option um, and it's convenient. So, uh, and they're willing to purchase that in multiple, um, they're, omni, they're omni-channel shoppers, they embrace omni-channel. So they, they will purchase those products in a grocery store. They'll purchase them in a convenience store and they're, they're not, um, price sensitive. So, you know, I definitely think that those products are absolutely important, um, to the convenience space, especially now in future state, people are starting to innovate even in beverage again, which is great to see. So whether it's cold pressed juices or the refrigerated shots, we brought those in, the height of COVID, <clears throat> they always did well in the West. They did okay on the East and then kind of in the middle of like, eh, you know, but during the middle of COVID or in the, the midst of the pandemic, uh, those shots did really, really well. Um, so it was great timing to partner with our newest brand. And so those are the types of products that we see actually contributing to the growth in the fresh category. And then on Frozen, um, while the fill rate challenges were a pain point for sure, we had healthier brands that like kind of debuted because of that. And so like Amy's, for example, that was not probably the most staple, if you will, in the frozen food category. Um, it didn't, you know, rank super high. Now it does. And um, so they had product in the midst of COVID. They made their way into convenience and they're staying. I mean, uh, that consumer is looking for healthier options, whether it's, you know, fresh or frozen or even in food service. <clears throat> so, yeah, I definitely... Yeah see that is sticking. I don't think it's going anywhere at all. Yeah. Frozen, fro I, frozen will continue to grow as, oh, yeah. as we get more of that dinner day part. Oh yeah, absolutely. If I, if um, like supermarket, which I'm sure is not going to shock anybody, but they, you know, we would hold people hostage in the store to build the basket. It was like the opposite of convenience. So if, if convenience can figure out how to build that basket and cater that chopper, those categories are just going to continue to grow. So. so there's also um, plenty of us who say we want to eat healthy and may or may not do so <laughs> when we get the chance. But then there's also people who just like what they like, and there's nothing at all wrong with that. I mean, there's there's a perfect time and a place for everything. So um, there are. what about some of the staple items, if you will? You had mentioned that there were um, roller grill innovations, you know, pre-wrapped like so, help me picture this. So they were pre wrapped on the roller grill because I, I I didn't see those, but that's really cool sounding. But then you have other things where you're you've you've continuously kept them in stores or, or provided them for retailers. Um, are some of those things? Do you expect to come back even stronger? Whether it's like the traditional roller grill or um, 
you know, fried chicken tenders or whatever, which is now I'm so hungry. Every time I do these shows, I'm so <laughs> hungry. <laughs> Sorry. So there, while my stomach growls, uh, I'll let you answer that question. <laughs> sure. Um, so like, yeah, there's, there's pre-wrap pro- products like uh, Padrinos, like tamales and those <clears throat> come pre-wrapped in like a, a shrink wrap and they roll. The, it keeps the moisture of the tamale in and that kind of thing. Um, but like I, I was saying, I think way earlier in the conversation is um, a lot of people took COVID as a time to like step back, uh, reflect on their current menu offering. And how do you innovate on Roller Girl? Because Roller Girl is probably the staple, if you will, of a food service type program. Um in a, in a convenience store. And so people are coming out with new flavors, LTOs, that kind of thing. I think condiments are coming back full force, but how do you innovate on those? And then outside of Roller Girl, I think the pandemic has um, brought to light for convenience. Like you can't just rely on Roller Girl anymore. We have to start innovating in food service outside of Roller Girl. And so you see programs like countertop warmers coming in or there's a theater aspect. So with the consumer who is the contemporary fresh shopper that wants to pay for premium, they also want to pay for theater. Um, and so how do you build that basket further? So whether it's, you know, build your own sandwich or maybe they want to see pizzas or chicken, just something that's a little bit different. Uh, barbecue being made on the floor. Like it just it just depends on on what area that your store is in. But they definitely want to be entertained. And they want to see the product being made because to them, that's the freshest possible in a convenience store. I want to see a hibachi, <laughs> hibachi chefs. And you tell me what store to go to and I'm, I'm going to go watch. <laughs> they start throwing the shrimp. I will you. totally check into that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <You're> you. <laughs> so um, I guess with, with all of this, um, it sounds like a really, uh, there, there's a lot of innovation out there. And um, I, I know mm-hmm. I'm, you know, we're all slowly getting started and I'm, I'm still getting started. And I, I have a road trip planned for um, later next month. And I'm excited because that means, you know, convenience stores are always going to be a place that you can stop and get something yes. awesome. And it's something that, you know, t- like I said in the beginning, 10 years ago, you didn't really think about it. You're like, okay, what's, what's the, what's the line, Jeff, that you say from, um, from National Lampoons all the time? Well, uh, Chevy Chase's character, Clark Griswold, said, I'm so hungry, I could eat the sandwich from the gas station. And in 1980, <laughs> that was funny. Um, for those of old us that have watched that, it's still funny. But you talk to a 20-year-old, and, and that joke just falls flat because oh, yeah. they've always seen that convenience stores can offer awesome food. Mm-hmm. So uh, when they remade the movie, um, they uh, uh, that was um, Vacation, not Caddyshack, right? Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That they that when they remade the movie, that that line didn't make the cut because it doesn't stand up to today's consumer. Oh wow, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's true, and and you know what? In twenty years from now, they'll be like hibachi in a convenience store. Of course, there is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jack, um, tell us, tell our listeners um, a little bit more where they can find more about all the offerings that Cormark has, how maybe to get in touch with you, because you have some really great ideas. I know you guys have a lot of analytics behind what you do. Um, there's just some, or where, where are some places, and we'll also put them in show notes, too, um, on the, the episode page. But um, if you mind telling us a little bit about where we can find more, where we can learn more, and uh, and, and all that. Absolutely. Um, you guys can access any information that you're looking for uh, at Cormark uh, through our website, which is www.cormark.com. Um, and so there's different tabs. There's a fresh tab. There's a food service tab. We also have a, a ton of other programs, whether it's Smart Stock or um, Promo Power, all that kind of thing. So it's uh, everything that you would need to learn about Cormark is actually on the website. And then obviously that leads to a form and we can contact whoever uh, reaches out and offer whatever additional information that they're looking for. And of course, Cormark is spelled traditionally, not like how we like to misspell things in our industry. It's not spelled with a Q or anything crazy like that. It's dot <laughs> com. So thank you very much for joining us today, Jack. Sure. And thank you all for listening to Convenience Matters. Convenience Matters is brought to you by Nax and produced in partnership with Human Factor. For more information, visit convenience.org.